All right, so don't run away after church. Come hang out with us. And right now, we're going to continue worshiping, continue worshiping the Lord with our giving. Why don't you welcome Pastor Luke this evening? Praise the Lord. God is good. Let's give him praise in the house this evening. Hallelujah. Praise God. Awesome worship this evening. Amen. Well, as Pastor Nick said, let us continue worshiping the Lord with our giving this evening. If you would like to turn with me to Philippians 4, verse 15. Philippians 4, verse 15. Alternatively, you can follow on the screens. And it says this. I'm reading from the Amplified Version. And it says, And you Philippians yourselves well know that in the early days of the gospel ministry, when I left Macedonia, no church assembly entered into partnership with me and opened up a debit and credit account in giving and receiving except you only. For even in Thessalonica, you sent me contributions for my needs, not only once, but a second time. Now that I, not that I seek or am eager for your gift, but I do seek and am eager for the fruit which increases to your credit, the harvest of blessing that is accumulating in, to your account. You have a Harvest of blessing accumulating to your account. Amen? Amen? But I have your full payment and more. I have everything I need and am amply supplied now that I have received the gifts you sent me. They are the fragrant odor of an offering and sacrifice which God welcomes and in which he delights. Now here's the power verse and I want you to get a hold of this. And my God will liberally supply, full to the full, your every need according to His riches in glory in Christ Jesus. Isn't that powerful? Amen. Amen. Well, now that we've heard the scripture, now hearts are filled with faith, let us declare this together. Raise your hands with me and say this with me. Because I am a tither and a generous giver, I have a great harvest in my heavenly bank account. I declare money comes to me from my harvest in abundance. Satan, you're bound over my money in Jesus' name. The angels are at work bringing my harvest in. I am prospering. I am prospering. Say it again. I am prospering for the sake of the gospel in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Well, if you believe that and you know that you're prospering, give God a shout of praise this evening. Hallelujah. Come on, you can do better than that. Come on. Praise the Lord. Well, family, we have many convenient ways for you to give. For cash, check, or credit card, raise your hands. The ushers will get an offering envelope to you. If you're giving online through our website, click on the giving link. It is safe, it is quick, and it's easy for secure giving. If you're doing a direct bank transfer, text to give to the number that is on the screen. It's 84321. Or many of us, we use the Church Center app. That's our favorite way to give. You can set up a one-time or recurring giving on that. And then while you're on the Church Center app, just to the right of the giving portion or the giving link at the bottom is the check-in section, right? We would love for you to check in. We would like to know that you're here so that we can serve you better, pastor you better, and give you all the incredible information about our church. Amen? And then, before we go tonight, I have some exciting news. We've made it super easy for you to evangelize. At the doors, there are invitation cards. Take a bunch of them, hand them out, invite folks to church, because this is a really cool church. Amen? Amen? Invite them to church. Their lives will be touched, changed, and transformed. All the information regarding services, where it's at, what's happening, is on that card. So take a whole lot, hand them out, and get people to church. Amen? Amen. Praise the Lord. While you're preparing your giving, we have the church news. Hi, family. Dr. Bev here, and we are so glad that you joined us for church this weekend. So many exciting things are happening. For example, 
We have Growth Track right here at CFC. We believe that God gave every single one of us unique gifts and talents to fulfill our specific purpose that we were created for. If you would like to learn more about the gifts that God has given you, then join us this weekend for step two of the Growth Track. The Growth Track is our monthly four-step process that is designed to help you take you to the next level in your relationship with God and to help you reach your full potential. Now, this weekend at Growth Track, you will have the chance to take a personality profile and spiritual gifts assessment, which will help you uncover how your unique design can point you towards your specific purpose. How amazing is that? And we can't wait to see you at Growth Track. It starts directly after our 10 a.m. service upstairs in the children's building. And please go ahead and ask one of our friendly dream teamers to show you the way, and they certainly will. Guess what, girls? Spring significance, how exciting. March the 25th at 7 p.m. We are having significance spring event. It's going to be incredible. It's going to be anointed. It's going to be fun. We're going to have some comedy, food, inspiring messages from me and others, perhaps for ladies. And I'll be praying for every single one of you. So don't miss out this free night. Bring your girlfriends along. Invite them to come. And I promise you, you're going to have a phenomenal time. Easter is coming around the corner. And as you know, many of the unchurched will often come to an Easter service and be given the opportunity to know God and discover who God created them to be. So family, this is a great opportunity to invite someone to church and to share the love of Christ to those who God has put in your path. Now here at Christian Family Church, our Easter experience this year is going to have so many different aspects of fun for all ages. Starting out with our food trucks, we're going to have a petting zoo, balloon artist, and a whole bunch of fun and games for the kids. And of course, an Easter egg hunt with thousands of Easter eggs for all the children, and they're going to enjoy it so very much. We also have a special golden egg a huge golden egg that the children can win. So to all the parents, this is a great opportunity. Dress up, put on your Easter dress and your Easter best, and have your family picture taken at our photo booths. They're gonna be phenomenal and enjoy a lovely afternoon with your Christian Family Church family. Well, that's all for church news, folks. So for more details or go to register for one of our events, you can go to the Church Center app. And remember, you matter. So while you're there, go ahead and check in and let us know that you're here. And on a last note, I'm sorry I'm not in church today, but Ava, our grandchild, she has turned 10. And Natalie said, Mom, you've missed so many birthdays, but you cannot miss her 10th birthday. So excuse me, but I will be there next Sunday. And I can't wait to see you all. Love you, family. Have a great service. Hi, everybody. Dr. Bev and I are celebrating 40 years of ministry. We want to thank God for His grace in keeping us all these years and using us for His glory. To commemorate this very special occasion, I've assembled a Bible. This has a great story to it. I was searching for a translation to use that would have the accuracy of the original Greek and the original Hebrew, and at the same time, be easy to read. And while doing that, somebody sent me the book of Ephesians of the King James 2000 translation. I read it along with the King James, comparing the two, to find that certain of the old words that were difficult to understand had been replaced by modern English. Therefore, the King James 2000 maintained the poetic feel of the King James with all its accuracy but it was very much easier to understand. I decided to go along with that, only to find out that a trust in India 
held the rights. So the Bible Society helped us extract that and we've now got it in print for you. Along with that, we have the pages in gold trim. We have the thumb index easy to find and we also have the words of Jesus in red. The typeface is big. It's not small, it's easy to read. And also in here, I have got 25 of my very own teachings. I'm talking about my notes, the notes I used to teach from. If I were to get up and teach, for example, great exploits of the heroes of faith, I would keep that page open. I start off with Daniel 3 verse 1 from the New Living Translation and read that verse right out of this page without going to the New Living Translation. Then my explanation is all there directly under the verse. And so anybody can teach this from a pulpit on a Sunday or in a fellowship group, or you can read it for your own personal edification. There are faith building messages in here, powerful Bible studies. And then I've got 50 daily devotionals as well, all to encourage your heart and feed your faith. Now I will be available directly after every service to autograph these books only for 10 minutes. And if you want to purchase any of my other books, I'll be able to autograph those for you at the same time. Now, the bad news is I only have printed 5,000 of these. And when they're gone, they're gone. I'm not redoing them because it's just for this very special 40-year occasion that we are printing these. All right, so I look forward to seeing you directly after this service. God bless you. Well, before we greet each other, let's just pray for the offering. Father, we thank you for this opportunity of sowing the gospel that others might find Christ as Lord and Savior. We thank you for a great harvest that comes back to us as you promised. In the name, in the name of Jesus, and everybody said... Amen. Well, we had a wonderful, <coughs> excuse me, a wonderful trip to South Africa, preached many times, various places, and um, God did some wonderful miracles, wonderful miracles. How many of you saw the woman get out the wheelchair? Did you see that? You know, that lady had a very serious car wreck. Her car rolled at about 100 miles an hour went off the road and rolled. She was going to that fast. She actually was totally backslidden and on drugs. And um, she rolled her car and it was like a concertina. We're going to show you the, the pictures. We're making a little video of this and we hope to show it to you next weekend. But uh, she rolled that car and then they took her out. She was totally unconscious, took her to a Muslim hospital. And they <clears throat> left her on a bed for two days, never attended to her. And she was in and out of consciousness for those two days. And um, she actually looked dead. Well, uh, some people came and stole everything out of the car. I don't know how they managed to get in there because I think they had to open it up to get her out. But anyway, um, and so no one knew who she was. And her husband didn't even know that she had the accident. Two days later, he managed to find her. He phoned all the hospitals and asked if there was so-and-so at hospital. And they said no. Of course, they didn't know because they didn't have her name. And um, so eventually, he found her and took her to another hospital where they had insurance. And they took care of her. They gave her 12 surgeries. And she needed a bunch more after that. So she's in intensive care and in hospital for about a month, just over a month. She came out three days before she came to the church service. So she was out three days before <laughs> she came to that church service. When I tried to pray for her, I wanted to measure her legs, but her knees would not bend. I don't know if you saw that. We're going to show that. on. We had multiple cameras on her, so we'll be able to show you that in this short video. But her knees would not bend. I, 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 felt like I was going to pull off the chair trying to straighten the legs out. And um, 
they were frozen like that. So then I put my hand behind the neck and prayed for, and in the chair, her legs shot out. I don't know if you saw that while she was sitting down. And, um, and then, of course, she walked, and she pushed me in the wheelchair, praise the Lord. But um, so God healed her, uh, wonderful. And then she, she pushed the chair out the church, and when she got into the mall, we got a mall there uh, with several restaurants in it. And, and anyway, when she pushed it out into the mall, uh, there was somebody there that needed a wheelchair, so she gave the wheelchair to this person, and she walked to her car, Okay. <laughs> with the person that brought her to church. And um, so praise God, she's going to come and give her testimony this coming week, and they'll film that, and we'll make a nice little movie out of it. Isn't that wonderful? Amen. All glory to God. The Lord healed her. She's so excited to tell her story too. Anyway, um, those Bibles, the bad news is I've only got, I only was able to fit 18 of them into the suitcase because they're quite heavy. And that was full, full weight. And um, one is really gone. So there's 17 left. So that's the bad news. And from time to time, I do bring some of those Bibles. They were printed for our 40th celebration for 2019. Um, and also, the book I wrote for that uh, celebration, 2019, I wrote a book, uh, Give Me This Mountain which is um, about Joshua taking the mountain, when you, uh, when, um, Caleb taking the mountain, which you asked Joshua for, for his inheritance. And uh, it's about claiming your destiny. It's about claiming your destiny. Give me this mountain. It's very encouraging, faith-building, and it motivates you to move forward. And I talk about certain challenges that we went through and how God delivered us and uh, kept and keeps delivering us. Praise the Lord. Amen. So it's encouraging. That book will be out there as well. All right. Praise God. So we're glad to be back. Possibly, as you heard, has, has gone to see uh, Ava on her 10th birthday uh, in Lafayette with uh, Natalie and the grandkids. And Ken is through there, too, with her kids to go and wish um, little Ava a 10th birthday. So they're all there this this weekend. Are you glad to be in church? Yes. Praise the Lord. Yes. I wish there were more of you here, but you here, yes. and we're going to have a good time. Yes. All right, well, let's stand up. Let's pray. Let's get right into the Word here this evening. Dear Father, we bow before you now in the name of Jesus. We thank you for your Word. As I come to teach tonight, I'll make it known that I'm not trusting or depending on limited human abilities to teach, but I am trusting in you. Therefore, I know without doubt that you anoint my mind, that I might grasp the revelation that will rise in abundance from my heart within. Thank you now for a supernatural recall of the Scripture. And I believe that your word will flow from my mouth smoothly, accurately, clearly, without hindrance from anything, carried by your anointing power and love to each person's mind, bringing understanding, removing confusion, and that your word will enter every heart, bringing faith, dispelling every fear, and we'll give you alone all the praise, the honor and glory for all that's revealed and accomplished through your word and by your spirit here today in Jesus' name, and all those that love the Lord said, Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Well, one thing that the Holy Spirit keeps impressing on my heart is how much that He loves you. And I believe it's going to take all eternity for us to actually begin to understand how much He loves us. That's so wonderful. So wonderful that we serve a God of love and compassion who understands our problems, understands our failings, and yet loves us regardless. Amen? He loves his enemies. God does. He wouldn't ask us to love our enemies if he wasn't going to do that. Amen? He loves the worst sinner. He loved Hitler, believe it or not. Not Hitler's sin, obviously. He loves everybody. For God so loved the world, right? He gave his son. So, you know, the grace of God is beyond measure. Of course, Hitler went to hell. 
That's his fault, not God's. All right, now then, this is part four in our series, Who is the Holy Spirit? So why are we studying this subject, Who is the Holy Spirit? We're studying this subject because the Holy Spirit was sent by the Lord to be our comforter, to be our God, to be our friend, to meet every need in life, uh, because we need Him. We desperately need Him, especially in this hour that we're living in today. Thank you for those holy amens. So uh, it would be foolish not to know about Him and not to understand His ministry and availability for us to struggle through life and just ignore Him would be real foolish, don't you think? Amen. So it's imperative that we learn about the Holy Spirit. And there's so much to learn. We can't learn everything there is to know about the Holy Spirit in one or two Sundays or weekends. We have to take our time with this, get a revelation of this. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. We've got to have heart understanding, not just head knowledge here, yeah. so we can walk in this. Are you with me, family? Yeah. Yeah. All right. So, is it possible for the Holy Spirit to work through a Christian, a believer, today, the same way he worked through Jesus when he was in an earthly body, a, a, a natural human body, walking the earth 2,000 years ago? The way the Holy Spirit worked through Jesus when he walked the earth is it possible for the Holy Spirit to work like that through individual believers today? Amen. Let's find out. Let's ask Jesus. John 14, verse 12. You might want to go there. Shouldn't be too difficult to find. The Gospel of John, chapter 14. So glad to see so many Bibles. Praise the Lord. That's encouraging. Hold your Bible up. Make me happy. Okay. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Having your own Bible is first prize. Second prize is looking up at the screens. And I might add it's a distant second prize. Okay, have you found John 14 yet? Jesus said, most assuredly, I say to you, most assuredly. Now, why did he have to say that? I mean, if God speaks and says, I say to you, wouldn't that get your attention? Should. Hopefully. But then he goes to say, most assuredly, I say to you. In other words, it's this way and no other way. He who believes in me, say that, talks, he's talking about me. Tell the person he's talking about you. He that believes in me, that's you. The works that I do, he will do also. So Jesus said, you will do the works he did if you are a believer. That's the qualification. Are you a believer? Yes. The works that I do, he will do also. So what works did Jesus do? He healed the blind eyes, opened deaf ears, healed the cripples, the lame, cast out demons. Raise the dead. The works that I do, he will do also, and greater works than these will he do, and greater. Now, greater works, that's not talking about greater in quality. It's talking about greater in quantity. Because we'll do the same works, the same quality, but greater in quantity because there's more of us the Holy Spirit is all around the world working through millions of people, whereas working through one body when Jesus is on the earth. So, one person. So there's more miracles being done. Greater. Now, why will this happen? Because I go to my Father. Because I go to my Father. So, Jesus is going to the Father, therefore we will do the same miracles he did. How does that make it possible for us to do the same miracles he did, going to the Father? 
Well, if you'll read the same chapter, verse 16, John 14, verse 16, you'll see these words. And I will pray the Father, or I'll ask the Father, to send the Holy Spirit to you. I will ask the Father to send the Holy Spirit to you. In other words, he's saying, the Holy Spirit who did the works through me will do the same works through you. That's why you will do the same works I did. Because it's the same miracle worker, the Holy Spirit at work in the church now as was working through Jesus when he walked the earth. So say this, because I have received the Holy Spirit, I will let him do the same works through me that he did through Jesus. Praise God. Amen. All right. So in order for us to do what God said we can do, we need to reprogram the negative thinking out of our minds. We need to program our mind, program the negative thinking out. Amen? We need to become aware of the Holy Spirit and learn to walk with Him and relate with Him. Amen? Amen. Just be led by Him. When I pray for the sick, that's what I do. I just listen to the Holy Spirit's guidance. He tells me what to do. And when He tells me what to do, I know there's going to be a miracle. Do you see that? Why would He tell me to do something if He wasn't intending to solve that problem? You see? So the minute He tells you what to do, the gift of faith operates. You see that? The gift of faith. That's what operates in my life, is the gift of faith. I find it impossible to doubt when I'm ministering to people. I find it impossible to doubt, not because of my faith, but because the gift of faith comes, which is greater than my faith at that moment in time. Does that make sense? So the minute you have that instruction, pray for this person, the gift of faith is there. Obviously. Because you know... He wants to heal that person because he wouldn't tell you to pray for them if he had no intention of healing them. Are you with me? So tune into the Holy Spirit. Just begin to depend on him. When you're ministering to people, listen to your heart. Stop listening to your head. Listen to your heart. Focus your mind on your spirit because that's where the Holy Ghost lives. And you'll know what to do. He'll guide you. Right? Right now, the church is thinking and believing what the devil wants the church to think and believe. The church is, by and large, by and large so confused and mixed up, full of doubt and unbelief, and ignorant of the Word of God. And I've said it before, I said it a lot in South Africa, I said the greatest enemy that the church has now is ignorance. Because ignorance will kill you. See, Isaiah 4, 6 is my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. See, it's lack of knowledge of what God has for us, what he'll do for us, what he's done for us, and how to use it, how to apply authority, how to apply our faith, how to pray, all these simple things. It's a lack of knowledge if we don't receive a prayer answered, it's not God's fault. There's something missing in our understanding of faith somewhere. There's something missing. That missing key will be revealed by the Holy Spirit, and your faith will start working for you. He wants to lead us into all truth, right? So if we'll learn to follow Him, we'll walk in greater victories in our prayer life. Is this making sense? So most Christians never imagined that they could carry out what Jesus said here in John 14, verse 12. That they will do the same works. Most Christians never imagined that they could do that. In times of emergencies, 
that would be the last thought that would go through their mind is that they could do a miracle here in the name of Jesus. We never dawn on them to use their authority. Now, there are two reasons why we can do the same works. The one is, the Lord Jesus said he's going to ask the Father to send the Holy Spirit, the anointing. And the second one is, the Lord gave us his authority to use by using his very own name. You can see that the next verse, John 14, same chapter, verse 13, the next verse. And Jesus said, and, that means I'm not done, and whatever you ask, I put command in brackets in the screen there, because that's actually the truth, the true meaning of that root Greek word for ask, is command, I'll walk you through that in a moment. Whatever you command in my name, that I will do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. So whatever you command in my name, that I will do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. So notice this. He wants us to use his name to see miracles so that the Father can be glorified. Amen. That's what he wants. That's why he wants us to do it. The most important thing for Jesus on his heart is to glorify the Father. Right. right? So he wants the miracles because he wants the Father to be glorified. Isn't that what happens when miracles happen? From what I heard, well, in Johannesburg, when that woman got out the chair, the church went ballistic back there. The people jumped up and shouted, went bananas. And I believe that's what happened. Yeah, I believe in Sunday morning that people jumped up and started shouting, why? Wow, they're praising God for what the Lord did. Jesus said, right here, whatever you command in my name that I'll do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. So the Father receives the glory through Jesus the Son when we use his name. He does the miracle, the Father gets the glory. And that's what happens. We praise him for miracles. We praise him for answered prayers. So God wants to answer our prayers so that the Father can be glorified. Say that. Jesus wants me to use his authority so the Father can be praised. Amen. Say this. When I command God's will to be carried out in a circumstance, the result will bring glory to the Father God. Now look at the next verse, verse 14. Again, Jesus is saying, if you ask or command anything in my name, I'll do it. So he's repeating himself now. He's repeating himself. If you command anything. Now, anything in the Greek means what? Anything. Why? Because that's what anything means. Well done. Now I say this, I speak on behalf of Jesus, I stand in his place and speak his will, just like he did when he was on the earth, I carry out, I, I carry on his ministry for him, I command what he wants done in his name. So we're not commanding God, we're commanding the will of God be done in the earth. Amen? Amen. Now, the next passage here, I would like to show on the screens in blue. It says in Strong's Concordance, reference number 4441. So in the morning, let's have that passage in blue up on the screen, whoever's doing the overheads for me, if you don't mind, that whole paragraph. All right, so if you look up the word, command, the word ask in that verse, if you look it up in the Strong's, Vines, Young's Concordance, you will see number 4441 is the Greek word explained in English. 
And then at that point, you'll see another verse, another note. It says, the root Greek at that number, the root Greek is 154. So if you go to 154, it'll say this. The root Greek word for ask is directly translated into English as strictly a demand of something due. Strictly a demand of something due. So I'd like all that in blue up on the screen. So strictly a demand, strictly a demand of something due. That's what the word ask means in the Greek. Strictly a command, a demand of something due. So that word should be written, if you command anything in my name, I will do it, as I put it there. So obviously the translators got cold feet in translating that portion of Scripture. Because I get when you read it, if it said command, it would look a little weird, I guess, for the, the unrenewed mind to grasp that. But let's see how that works, explaining how that works. What does it mean, strictly a demand of something due? What's that mean? All right, let's say you go to the store and you buy a fridge. You pay cash for it or use your card. But you've paid for the fridge, right? It's yours. It's in the store and you go home. And they arrange to deliver that fridge to you tomorrow. So, as far as the store is concerned, that fridge is yours. It's due to you. They can't hold it and keep it because it's due to you. Right? They owe it to you. It's in the books as yours. It's due to you. So, God is saying to us that when Jesus died on the cross, he purchased healing for all of us. So healing in a healthy body is due to us. He purchased financial provision for all of us. So financial provision is due to us, right? He purchased salvation for us, the whole human race. So salvation is due to the human race. And you can go on and on and on like that. But the devil or ignorance keeps that from flowing into our hands for our experience. We have to use the name of Jesus then to command that circumstance to change and call that package in, whatever it is, whatever it is we are, have need of. Call that package in. So I release that to flow into my life in the name of Jesus because it's due to me. You see that? That's how it works. Jesus bought your victory. Therefore, victory is due to you. We are demanding circumstances and the devil to line up with the word of God and the will of God. It was the Holy Spirit who worked the miracles through Jesus, as I said. It is the same Holy Spirit who works miracles through us today. The Lord Jesus said the following before leaving the earth in Acts 1 verse 8. But you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. You shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. That means you receive an anointing. And you shall be a witness to me. So this power enables us to witness for Jesus. Um, now that's just not only explaining who he is. It's more than that. It's also to, to demonstrate his resurrection. That he is resurrected. By using his name, people see the evidence of his actions in the natural realm, and that's proof of his existence. We're witnessing that he is alive and resurrected by the supernatural, by the miracles. You see, all other religious leaders are dead and buried, and there's no power 
in their names. They might believe in them. They can talk about them. But they can't prove by the power of the person's name that he's alive like we can with Christ. You can't use the name of any other religious leader to get a person to get up out of a wheelchair. But the name of Jesus does get people out of wheelchairs. You see that? So we can, re we can prove Jesus. We can make that video. You can show it to somebody. And you can prove Jesus is alive today with that video. You see that? But you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. And you shall be a witness to me in Jerusalem and in Judea and Samaria and in the end of the earth. So between one and two billion people on the earth today, believers, are filled with the Holy Ghost and speak in tongues, with tongues. So we are moving into this time. So these people are all full of power, right? If you've got the Holy Ghost, you speak in tongues, you full of that power. You got it? If you're born again, you're born again of the Spirit of God, the same Holy Ghost. But there's a greater ministry of the Holy Spirit available to us and that's to be full of the Spirit and speak in tongues. And if you don't, I encourage you to go on the Christian Growth Seminar and listen to the whole study on the subject and get prayed for and you will receive. Now then, we are moving into a time of great persecution. We all know that. Because of the unsaved world, it is getting darker. It's getting more vicious and more hostile toward godliness. The unsaved world is getting world's really more vicious, more hostile, more aggressive toward godliness. But at the same time, as darkness gets darker, so the light is getting brighter. And the Holy Spirit is revealing Jesus more mightily through the people of God. The Holy Spirit is wanting to reveal Jesus more powerfully, more than ever before, through every individual who's full of the Holy Ghost and everyone that's born again. So we ought to expect the supernatural in our lives. We ought to expect the Holy Spirit to work through us. Say that, I expect the supernatural. I must be alert to opportunities where God wants to work through me to help hurting people. Expect the supernatural. The one who works the supernatural lives in you. The one who works the supernatural lives in you. Question, what happens when the Holy Spirit comes upon you? A, a for apple, you receive power. You receive anointing. The Lord Jesus told his disciples, I have asked the Father to send the Holy Spirit. The Lord Jesus said, stay in Jerusalem until the Holy Spirit comes with his power to anoint you. Don't go out without him. Wait. Every Christian who has the Holy Spirit and speaks in other tongues has this power. Everyone. The Holy Spirit came just as Jesus said he would on the day of Pentecost in Acts chapter 2. Now on that day of Pentecost, the Holy Spirit descended into the upper room on Mount Zion in Jerusalem. And the entire church, 120 believers, were full of the Holy Ghost and spoke in tongues. And as I've said before, Mary, the mother of Jesus, was in that group. So any Catholics here... Mother Mary spoke in tongues. You can see she's in that group. Have a look in Acts 1. And then you'll see in Acts 2 it says all spoke in tongues. That includes Mary. Say this, if it's good enough for Mary, it's good enough for all Catholics. And they all began to speak in other tongues. Acts 2.4. It says, and they were all full with the Holy Ghost. All. And began to speak with other tongues 
or heavenly languages as the Holy Spirit gave them utterance or as the Holy Spirit enabled them to do. As the Holy Spirit enabled them to do. When you speak in tongues, you speak, not the Holy Spirit, but he makes it possible. He makes it possible. Now, that's the end of my message for today, but I've just thought of something I'd like to share with you. Um, if you want to turn your Bible to Acts chapter 3, Acts chapter 3. Verse 6. You know, in Acts chapter 3, verse 6, Peter set the lame man at the beautiful gate of the temple. In the name of Jesus Christ, is not in my notes, in the name of Jesus Christ, rise up and walk. And the lame man leapt and jumped and walked and praised God. And a great crowd of people gathered, 5,000 people gathered, because they all knew this lame man, been sitting here for a long time. And um, so they were all amazed at this miracle and praised God. And Peter gave an altar call and they all got born again. And then the Pharisees came around and they threw Peter in jail to say thank you. And then they brought him out the next day and said, so tell us how you did this miracle. And this, cause they all knew the guy. How did he get healed? I want to know. So go to Acts 4.10. This is very interesting here. Acts 4.10. Peter's answer. He said, by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Underline that. By the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. By him, this man stands here before you all. By the name of Jesus, by him. Right? So by the name of Jesus, by him. This man stands here before you all. So Peter said, in the name of Jesus Christ, rise up and walk. And Jesus did it. So Peter's saying, when I use the name, Jesus did it. And Jesus, Peter's saying, the name and Jesus are one and the same. Are one and the same. Because Jesus is in his name. Jesus is manifest in his name. You see that? Amen. So that Jesus, Jesus. Is, living is living in his name. Amen. You could say that, you could say this, that God gave us the name of Jesus to take the place of Jesus in the earth today. You could say that. Because when you use that name, he's there. And does it. And did not say we're two or three gathered together in my name. There I am. You see, say this, Jesus, Jesus is in his name. So when you speak the name of Jesus, just imagine you are releasing Jesus into that situation. See that in your mind, in your heart. Amen? Amen. Of course, it's the Holy Spirit doing it on behalf of Jesus. Praise God. Well, I think that's where we're going to stop today. Hallelujah. We'll carry on next week. Are we learning anything about the Holy Spirit? Yes, this is helping.